what's up it's good it hey guys what is up it's mcguy and today we're going to be creating a dino game in scratch that you see when you have no wi-fi on google chrome so may uh some of you guys may know it some of you guys may not but today we're going to be building it and today we're going to be covering how to make the ground scroll so the first thing we want to do is delete this sprite and paint a new one and import and I'm going to choose ground one and through three and what we want to do is wait for these to do that and then we're just going to delete the first one because that is irrelevant so in here we want to first of all uh, go to zero zero so when flag is clicked go to zero zero and just like that it goes to zero zero but instead of making the Y zero we're going to make it like negative 160 uh, that's a little negative 140, I want to say. Uh, we can even make a negative 150 because we have a large screen to play with. There we go, that should be right. Uh, oh, negative 80? Alright, yeah, that looks better. Okay, and so what we need to do is we need to, um, First of all, create a new variable. We're going to call this scroll x speed, or just scroll speed. And we're going to set scroll speed to something like 10. So when we see when we set this scroll speed to 10, this is going to be speed at which the ground moves. So as the game progresses, it's going to get faster and faster. So what we want to do is click hide, I'll click looks and drag in a hide. And then we're going to say, when flag is clicked, just to make this simpler, we're going to create a new when flag is clicked block. We're going to drag in a create clone of myself. Now, what we want to do is create, uh, for the clone, we want to drag in a when I start as clone. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a variable only for this sprite. This will make it so that each clone has a sprite, has their own individual sprite, and doesn't go by one global sprite, meaning it's a sprite that goes with all the clones. So in order to make this uh for each clone we have to set for the sprite only and we're going to call it clone spawned and so i'll explain the way this works but what we want to do is set clone spawn to false then what we want to do is randomize the costume so we want to say switch costume to and then drag in a pick random and we're going to pick a random number from one to three as we see inside of our costumes there are three different ground one flat, one with two bumps, and one with one bump and one underneath. So we need to pick one that is, we need to pick random throughout these three costumes so it looks natural. And that's what we're doing here. Now the next thing we want to do is drag in a go to X and Y. And we're going to make it 480. And what we want to do is drag in a show. So we hide it here and now we're going to show it here. Uh, we want to show after we go to because we don't want it to teleport to a random place, to another place. That would look kind of odd. So then we're going to go into control and simply drag in a repeat until. In this repeat until, we want to drag in a less than. And here we want to, let me zoom in a bit. Here we want to say repeat until x position is less than negative 480, which is the other side of the screen. We're going to change X by scroll speed. But the problem is if we keep it like this, it's all going to go the wrong way. It's going to go from here to there. Instead, we want to multiply this by negative 1 to make it go the proper way, just like it does in the actual game. Once we have touched, or once we have gone greater than negative 480, all we want to do is delete this clone. So then we're going to drag in another one. I start this clone. And to make it simple, all we have to do is just drag in a forever if and another if. And we want to create our clone here. We're going to go into data and we're going to set clone spawn to true. Then what we want to do is drag in a conditional. And we're going to do this here. And we're going to drag in this here. So then what we want to do is we're simply going to drag in a clone spawn and set this to false. So that's going to be the code right here. 
And so if x position is less than zero, if the clone spawn is equal to false, then create a clone of myself and set clone spawn to true. So basically what we're doing here is I'm gonna take a minute to just simply explain the code. So the way this works is this sprite creates a clone of itself to the, to the right of the screen right here. Now what this is gonna do is it's gonna repeat until it gets to the other side and go left. So it's gonna start here and go all the way here. Now when it reaches this middle, there's gonna be nothing behind it. So what we're doing is we're saying if the clone spawns, so if it hasn't created a clone yet, then we're gonna create a clone create a clone of itself that's automatically gonna spawn on the right side of the screen. And then we're gonna set clone spawn to true so that it doesn't create another clone for that current clone, if that makes sense. And so this basically just changes the costume. This sets it to the right screen. This makes sure it goes until it reaches the middle of the screen. And then here, we're just basically checking if clone spawn is false and if it's in the middle of the screen. And then we're gonna create a clone of myself. So let's see if this works. As you can see, it starts from the left and it goes like that. There we go. And just like that, we have a random ground. Now you can see it's kind of stuck on this for some reason, but it'll show up with two. And this looks like it's going to the left. So now you may ask what happens if we want to make it faster. Change this to 15, and here we go. It's a little faster. For right now, we're going to keep it in 10, but we might change that in future parts. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching this part. I hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, see you guys next time. Peace out. Please.